Hello, you guys. Welcome to my channel, Jesus Wants You. I'm the Watchman on the Wall, Nikki Pratt. Listen, I wanted to, uh, not wanted, needed to come and further help clarify the deceptions and misconceptions of um, eating pork. Some more revelations concerning pork. Uh, should Christians eat it? Should Christians eat pork, swine, whatever you want to call it, the foul beast? Is it okay to eat pork chops, ribs, bacon? Is it okay? Should a Christian eat it? We're going to find out. Open your Bible to the book of Isaiah, chapter 66. Go ahead and have your Bibles there. Um, okay, so, is it a sin to eat it? As you heard me say before, I don't know everything. Sometimes I'm a little slow at some things. But by the help of God and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who leadeth, teacheth, guideth through all things, making revelation known unto man. I can tell you I have learned a lot letting the Holy Spirit lead me and guide me through scriptures. So there was, um, I had a few people after watching the uh, video that I just put up maybe a day ago, and um, some people, a few, felt like that maybe I had misinterpreted scripture or um, didn't know of other scriptures that they stated that um, says that Christians basically should not be eating pork or swine and some things concerning the Sabbath day. So I re remember I told you that there are so many scriptures warning and speaking on this topic and that says and proves that in these last days, this type of thing would be an issue. And um, my subscriber told me to read Isaiah chapter 66, verse 17. Now with me, when I'm studying or I'm going after some knowledge up on things, I do what the Bible says to do. When you're trying to make known revelation and get wisdom and knowledge, you read line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. So I didn't just read 17. I read up to read down. So let's move up to first uh, 15, and then we're going to move down to 18. Not just verse 17, okay? Verse 15 says, For behold, the world will come with fire, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree, in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination in the mouth shall be consumed together, said the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts, it shall come, that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Now, remember that scripture I read to you in Revelation, I think it was chapter 2, that spoke about um, those that would be Jews, professing to be Jews and wasn't Jews. This right here reminds me of that. When he said, I know thy works and your thoughts. Well, so, now, if you think that I didn't read the whole chapter of 66, Isaiah 66, to get a further meaning, you're wrong, because I sure did. I did. I did do that. So, um, before I even get any further, I can't, just for video time's sake, I cannot go in depth. But I can tell you this. Let me just explain to you in a nutshell what the whole chapter is dealing with and explaining about. And on your own time, read it. If you have to go and read it in the Amplified, I suggest that you do so to make sure that you get full revelation knowledge and meaning. So let me just give you a little bit of what it's saying. Okay? It is plainly a reproof of the wicked who Jews. Wow. That's what my video was talking about the other day. It is plainly a refute for the wicked of Jews, for the many idolatries 
and superstitions of which they were guilty and which are here set forth in figurative language, borrowed from the abominable practices to which many of the Jews were addicted in whose time? Isaiah's time. Who privately in enclosed gardens, which were not exposed to view, performed the heathen lustration sacrifice in the heathen manner and to other gods and eat meats, which were prohibited by the law as unclean, although in public they pretend to be true Jews or strict observers of the law, which is the same exact uh, example that I gave in the previous video. Now, you can't, in, under, in order to understand something's purpose, especially concerning the Bible, you must go back to the beginning of where it was mentioned or started to get full understanding. And let's turn over real quick to the book of Leviticus. Now, if anybody know anything about the book of Leviticus, you already deal with what? The law. Okay? So in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7, let's see what it says. If Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet, yet he chew it not the cud, he is unclean to you. So that was one of the laws. You could not eat it. It was unclean. Let's go to, real quick, like, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 8. And the swine, because it divided the hook, yet chew it not the cud, it is unclean unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Don't eat it, don't touch the dead carcass. So, at this point, you may say, well, see, Nikki, they say it right there. You should not eat it. We should not be eating it. Well, hold on. Hold on. Let me just give you, a, uh, an, in a nutshell, basically what is this talking about in the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, what is it talking about? There were professing Jews claiming to look Holy, that's what it meant when it said uh, in other versions it used the word consecrated. When you read, I left out of Isaiah, um, when you read about when it said that uh, they were, uh, hold on, um, basically it was when they said that it was sanctify themselves and purify themselves, they were trying to look holy, just like these messianic Hebrew lights. Israelite Jews today, Jews today, they want to look holy, okay? And, and, and what they were doing was hiding behind a tree so they wouldn't be seen, but then they was, they was doing like these sacrifices and, and doing all these rituals, unto, and it had nothing to do with the Lord, okay? So the Lord in Isaiah, they said he was going to deal with it. It was a form of idolatry. Um, hold on. So, let's see. I wanted to share something with you, but for time's sake, I'm going to have to. Let's, let's do this. Oh, my back hurt. So, let me turn your Bible to the book of Mark. The book of Mark chapter 7. Let's see what the Lord say about this. But I want you to read that for yourself. I can't expound on it, but basically it was a form of idolatry. They was doing this traditional thing, saying that, you know, these things were, you know, uh, unclean, which in the law it was. But we're not under the law. So before I even go in depth, I, I'll further explain, but I, I don't want to get caught off and lose time because it's almost 10 minutes already. So Mark chapter 7, verse 5 through 23. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition 
of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands. He answered and said unto them, now this is Jesus, watch this. This is what Jesus said. He said, well, hath Isaiah, meaning Isaiah, isn't that something? Here Jesus is speaking about the same prophet that my subscriber told me to read, Isaiah. So watch what Jesus said. He said, well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips. See, that's what they were doing. But their heart is far from me. This is what makes it a sin to the Lord. You're doing these traditions and rituals and abstaining. Okay? Verse 7. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of the pots and cups and many other such like things you do. And he said unto them, For ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and mother, and whoso curses father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, he's telling them, but you say this, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say a gift, by, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. Hmm. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God what? Of non-effect. Through your tradition which you have delivered, and many such like things do ye. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, like, come here, come here, come here. Let me talk to y'all. Let me talk to y'all. Come, come over here. Jesus said this. He said, hearken unto me, which means listen. Listen unto me, every one of you, and understand. This is Jesus. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of a man. Those are they that defile the man out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak, whatever in here is going to come out. Okay? Verse 16, watch what the Lord says. He says, if any man have ears, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot, cannot defile a man, because it is entered not into his heart. It is entered into the belly and go out into the drop purging all meat, meaning when you go to the bedroom, it's going to be gone, okay? All right. I'm trying to make it plain. Verse 20. And he said that which come out of the man that defileth the man, for from within out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts, and he's going to list them, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, and all these things come from within that defile the man. Let's move right along. Okay. So let me give you a prime example of what this looks like. We're going to pretend that I'm an unbeliever, and I'm talking to you, the believer, okay? And I'm an unbeliever, and I say, um, so, hey, you know, um, I noticed you pray over your food a lot. Uh, why do you pray over your food? And you say, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I pray over my food all the time. Okay, I, that's good, but why? Um, you know, for the purifying of it, to, to clean it, to make sure that anything that is in it that is bad, you know, I have to pray over my food and also for Thanksgiving. This is what you're saying now. I, I pray over my food for Thanksgiving. I want to thank the Lord for blessing me. The, the food that I take in is for nourishment and the purifying of my soul, uh, for healing. And um, I, 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 you know, I just want to make sure everything, you know, is clean. I go, oh, okay. Well, hey, look, I was out for lunch. Um, I went and bought uh, a barbecue dinner, and I had an extra. Would you like it? Oh, yeah. 
So you take it and you're praying over your food. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you, Lord, for giving this food for the nourishment of my soul. Father, in Jesus' name, anything that is in it, Lord God, that is going to harm me, I hereby bind it in Jesus' name. Whatsoever you said in your word and whatsoever is thankful for, Lord God, is hereby sanctified. In Jesus' name, amen. So you pray your little prayer. And you open up your little box. And you look in there, you got chicken, you got a little salad, you got corn, and you got three ribs. And you look at me and you say, Oh, uh, I can't eat these ribs. Uh, you want them? And I look back at you and say, well, oh, I'm sorry. What, you, you're allergic to them? Or what, what's the deal? I'm the unbeliever now. Uh, no, it's just that, it's, you know, I, I'm Christian and uh, it, it's considered unclean. You know, the Bible says we shouldn't eat pork. I'm the unbeliever. I'm like, Really? Interesting. But you just prayed over your food. I, I, I don't understand. And then you say, well, what do what you mean? Well, you know, when I asked you if you why you pray over your food, you say it's for the cleaning, the, the cleaning and the purifying and in case there's something wrong with it, um, you pray over it. You know, you, you trust, you look like you trust God at his word, so... But, you won't, is the word not powerful enough for the pork? There it is. There it is. How, how is it that you can have food in your, now, now, now let me say this. Let, let me do this little disclaimer. I am not promoting pork, number one. Number two, if you choose to continue not to want to eat pork chops, ribs, pork slap, sandwich, whatever. That's your prerogative, Bobby Brown. My whole message today is to bring you revelation of the freedom and liberty that you have in Jesus Christ and give you more understanding of his word and tell you that you don't have to abstain from such things as in the book of, uh, I think Timothy said, people will be doing in these days. Okay? So, um, let me show you what's going on. Let's do this. Turn your Bible to the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. Watch this. This is what's going on in the last days. This is where we are. He says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now, I'm not going to read all the other verses. I'm going to skip on down for five for the video time's sake. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Paul was warning of this a long time ago. See, that little uh, skit I did earlier was to give you a prime example of what you're actually doing. You're praying over your food. You're a believer. You're a Christian. You're praying over your food. But when it comes to that, oops, uh, 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 no, I can't eat that. Is there not power in his word? Let me let me let me further tell you what's going on. So basically, in the last days, even among those who claim God but never came to the knowledge of the truth to be saved, it is logical then that this passage is talking about those who have some form of religion. It also said it occurs in the last days, so it is only common sense that in the end time. Religious organizations of the world will contain these faithless people. Remember the video I did the other day? We kept hearing the word faith. There was a reason for that. So basically it means that they have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. I'll, okay, so saying this, people claim that there is a God, but they actually live their lives as if God does nothing supernatural on the earth and can do nothing outside of the natural laws and the works of man. Mm. So you have Islam claims to know God, but they think that they have to conquer the world for him, and they deny his son. You have Jews who claim to know God, 
But Israel makes decisions contrary to their own God, given scriptures, and they still deny the Son, Jesus Christ. Okay? Eastern religions and New Age religions claim to know God of God, but they think that they will exist on earth until they're, by their own efforts, they become one of the either of the higher powers of the universe. Right? So most of the religions today have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. There are many Christians who claim themselves to be Christians, but they display their faithlessness in and really you almost need to be atheist. Here's some prime examples of people who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Those that are faithless to believe that God raised his son, Jesus, physically from the dead. Those who are faithless to believe that the son of God became man within Mary without the help of a man. Those who do not believe the son of God was the atonement and appropriation for all mankind's sins. Those who reject or add to the good news of salvation through God's grace, through faith in God's only begotten Son. That's just a few. It's a ton of them. So let's uh, move it right along. Let's turn to the book of uh, Colossians. Let's turn to the book of Colossians. I want you to see something here. Here we go. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, and I'm going to read along. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him. In who? In him. Highlight that, underline it, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in the baptism wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. So basically when you're baptized in Christ, you're buried in the likeness of his death raised in the newness of life, blotting out, verse 14, the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it all away, nailing it to the what? To the cross. And having four principalities and powers, he made a show of it, show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore watch it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in a respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. What? What? Which are a shadow of things to come, but of the body is Christ. Let no man beguile you, fool you, deceive you of your reward and voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshy mind, and not holding the head from which all the body of joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together, increase it with the increase of God. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of this world, watch this question. Why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not. What? Taste not? Taste not? You mean bacon? You mean pork chops? Taste not? Don't touch that bacon. Don't touch it. Touch not, handle not. We were already warned. He said, This know also in the last days. Verse 22 which are all or to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in honor to the satisfying of the flesh. See, that's what they were doing in Isaiah 66. 
Not it was saying no, no. It was it was all wrong. It was nothing in here about the heart. It was all about the traditions and the rudiments and the ordinances that the Lord was talking about, which was the whole capitation of it, idolatry. Nothing had none of that foolishness had nothing to do with the Lord. That's what it was saying. Okay, so moving right along, let's turn to the book of Mark. Now this is gonna blow your mind. The book of Mark. Chapter 16, we're going to learn together That's what we're going to do. Um, verse 16 through 18, Mark chapter 16, verse 16 through 18. 18. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Let me give you a prime example. I asked a certain person, after I had surgery one time, to bring me a can, no dull pineapple juice, to bring me a can of dull pineapple juice. This person brought me a bottle twist top bottle of pineapple juice. I had never heard of it, had never known to see it. I'd never known there was pineapple juice that came in the twist top bottle as it came. I drank it. As soon as it went down, I vomited in. It gone. Out of me, gone. Let me prove it to you. Proverbs. These signs shall follow them that believe. Turn your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 23. I mean, as soon as I drank it, the fast as I drank it down, the fast as it came right back up. I wasn't sick. I wasn't sick at all. It was a few days after my surgery. I was fine. I was just hungry. Okay. Anyway, watch this. I'm going to read verse 6 and 7. I'm in the wrong chapter. Hold on. I'm in song. So, uh, I'm in the middle right. Okay. I'm trying to rush. I don't want to keep y'all too long. So Proverbs 23, verse 6 to 7. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil lot, neither does thou thou his dainty meat. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. See, there is the Lord talking about that heart again. Eat and drink, said he to thee. He's saying that's what the friend is saying to you. Eat and drink. But his heart is not with thee. Your friend don't love you, but he's telling you with that evil eye to eat and drink. Go on, eat it, drink, eat and drink it. Verse 8 says, The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. The food that you eat ain't going to help. The Lord said, you going to vomit it up. It ain't going to hurt you. He can mean for it to hurt you, but it ain't. Because you're a believer. So not trusting anyone. This basically was saying, don't trust anyone who said that your friend. They give you an evil eye and say, here, to drink, eat here, eat this cake. And the scripture says, with promise. If you do, you're going to vomit it up. So what is an ordinance? A decree, a law? an injunction, a command, or mandate. Rudiments. Basically, Hebrew Christians had not come into the grace and full knowledge of the truth and the God and the power of God's word. Let's look at the book of Galatians, chapter 5. I'm doing okay on time. The book of Galatians, chapter 5. Hopefully I have time to expound on some things, hopefully. Like I say, I don't tend to know a lot of things, but one thing I'm going to do, anything that I try to tell you, that I do tell you, I'm going to try to my best to back it up with scripture. And I'm going to try my best to make it as plain as a two-year-old could understand it. I try. What? Okay, this is a new Bible. Y'all forgive me. Okay, let me pause it real quick. Hold on. Okay, I'm so glad you can pause time. 
But anyway, um, actually, I forgot. I wanted to read uh, the book of Galatians, chapter 5, in the Amplified, because I really want to make sure you hear what I'm hearing and seeing what I'm seeing. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying, okay? Watch this. And if you have your phone, whatever, Galatians chapter 5, amplified. If it sounds different from the KJV. Verse 1. It was for the, this freedom that Christ set us free, completely liberating us. Completely liberating us. Set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject, subject again to a yoke of slavery, which you want removed. You are in bondage if you keep in the Sabbath, abstaining from certain meats, and you are in bondage. Okay? Verse 2. Notice, it is I, Paul, who tells you that if you receive circumcision, which is a form of bondage, as a supposed requirement of salvation, Christ will be of no benefit to you, for you will lack the faith in Christ that is necessary for salvation. Once more, I solemnly affirm to every man who receives circumcision as a supposed requirement of salvation. So you think that I have to keep the Sabbath, and if I don't keep the Sabbath, then I, I won't be saved because I'm be breaking the law. You break the law every day. Don't tell me you don't say a little white lie. Don't tell me you don't uh, ever uh, turn your eye at your neighbor. We break the law every day. That's why Jesus came. Hear this now, that he is under obligation and required to keep the whole law. You have been severed from Christ. If you seek to be justified, that is declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in right standing with God. Through the law, you have fallen from what? Grace. For you have lost your grasp on God's unmerited favor and blessings. For we, not relying on the law, but through the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit, by faith, are waiting confidently for the hope of righteousness, the completion of our salvation. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. None of them laws, none of them ordinances, none of them uh, rudiments, okay? None of the traditions. But only faith activated and expressed and working through what? Love. You are running the race well. Then he asks, who has interfered and prevented you from obeying the truth? Watching, going after, as Timothy talks about, these doctrines of devils, preaching these lies, having you guys conscience seared with an hot iron, and it's getting you caught up. You coming into bondage, and if you in bondage, we can't be free. Which you not free, the Bible says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. All right? So he says, you were running the race well. Who has interfered and prevented you from obeying the truth? This deceptive persuasion is not from him who called you to freedom, in Christ, a little leaven, and the scripture says leaven at the whole lump. If somebody infects you with that, you, you messed up all the way. Okay? A slight inclination to error or a few false teachers leavens the whole batch. It perverts the concept of faith and misleads the church. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will adopt no other view contrary to mine on the matter. But the one who is disturbing you, whoever he is, will have to bear the penalty. But as for me, brothers, if I am still preaching circumcision, as I had done before I met Christ, and as some accuse me of doing now, as necessary for salvation, why am I still being persecuted by the who? Jews. Wow. See, all you got to do is look to the Bible. Has been abolished. Verse 12, I wish that those who are troubling you by teaching that circumcision, bondage, is necessary for salvation would even go all the way and castrate themselves. Exclamation mark. 
For you, my brothers, were called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom become an opportunity for sinful nature, nature, worldliness, selfishness, but through love serve and seek the best for one another. For the whole law concerning human relationships is fulfilled in one precept. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is, you shall have an unselfish concern for others and do things for their benefit. But if you bite and devour one another in bickering and strife, watch out that you along with your entire fellowship are not consumed by one another. But I say walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek him and be responsive to his guidance. And then you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard, regard for God and his precepts. For the sinful nature has this desire which is opposed of the spirit. And, uh, I'm sorry, sinful nature, for these two, the sinful nature and the spirit, are in direct opposition to each other, continuing in conflict, so that you as a believer do not always do whatever good things you want to do, but if you are guided and led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Wow. Now, the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, total irresponsibility, lack of self-control. Here it is. Idolatry, Isaiah 66. Sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these, I warn you beforehand, he says, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result of his presence within us, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature together with his passions and appetites. If we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, we must also walk by the Spirit with personal integrity, godly character, and moral courage. Our conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit, we must not become conceited, challenging, or provoking one another, envying one another. The one last, let me give you one last example. Turn quickly to the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter 11. Let me show you one last thing. Verse 5. This is Peter. He says, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, a certain vessel descend, as it had been a great sheep, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me, upon the which, when I had fastened my eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts, and creeping things and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay, and eat. But I said, no, 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 Lord, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, Lord, not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. Lord, I'm paraphrasing here, I've been a good, a good Christian. I've been eating everything you told me to eat, and whatever you said, whatever is unclean, Lord, that pig, that swine, that beast, oh, Lord, I ain't eat that. Nope, I ain't eating that. Let me show you what the Lord said. But the voice answered me again from heaven and said this, What God has cleansed that call not thou common. Okay? So, did you hear the word? What he cleansed. If you pray over your food, you're saying, 
Lord, I trust you and have faith in your word, in the power of your word. Don't we speak all the time? Lord, we trust your word. Your word is sharper than two, any two double-edged sword. There is power in your name. If there's power in his name, why are you abstaining from certain meats? I'm just saying, I'm just asking. Why are we abstaining from certain meats? You're in bondage, not in freedom. From bondage to freedom. You were bondage without Christ. In Christ, you're free. There is liberty and freedom in Christ. Let me say this. He did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. It's fulfilled. If you came to me and said, Nikki, I need my rent paid. And if, can you, do you have $650? Because if I don't get the $650, they're going to put me out on the street. And I'll go, okay, I'll give you the $650. And I will pay your land on the forward, your whatever you call them people. And you come right back to me and say, Nikki, um, I'm in my house, but I need that six hundred. I need six hundred fifty dollars for I be put out on the street. And this may be a bad analogy, but I'm gonna look at you like you're crazy. What are you talking about? I just paid it. My whole purpose of bringing that up. When we do such things like that, this, this is why the Lord called it a sin. For those of you who may have took what I said in the past, the, the video I did before this, saying that the Sabbath day, which I read in Isaiah chapter 1, was a sin. Look, keeping these things, doing these rudiments, ordinance, traditions, is a sin. Because you deny the power thereof. You are lacking, you're in bondage. You have fallen from grace. He came to fulfill the law and prophets. He, he fulfilled it. Remember I read and said he put all that stuff to shame. What they were doing in, in, the, in Leviticus days, they had to do sacrifices and sacrifices and oils and meats and all this. Jesus was our sacrificial lamb. So therefore, if he's a sacrificial lamb, there is nothing that you should be sacrificing. You shouldn't be abstaining from bacon. But if you, take for instance me. Now, people laugh at me when I eat bacon. They say, Nikki, you should eat the whole bacon. I take off the fatty part from the bacon, and I eat the lean part. Well, Nikki, um, you, you, you pray on your food, but, but why you don't eat the fat? Because it's nasty. That's different than, Lord, I'm afraid of my food. I don't believe and trust you at your word that whatsoever is in this meat is not going to harm me. But I not only pray over my bacon, I pray over anything else I eat, everything I eat. So if I'm praying over everything I eat, why is there a pall on the bacon? I don't eat the fat on the bacon. I like the lean parts of the bacon. I don't want the fat. The fat is obsolete. Ain't no meat and fat. I got enough fat on my body. I don't need that. I want the lean part of the bacon. But I don't eat bacon a lot. It's not one of my choices. I like pork chops for breakfast. Breakfast chops. Yeah, I eat some pork. It's called freedom, people. Freedom. Now, the Bible says, let no man judge you on what you should eat, meat, drink, of respect of a holy day. None of that. You don't have to do that. It's freedom in Christ, not freedom to sin. Well, okay, I'm going to go and commit uh, fornication and continue shacking. No, no. Freedom from the ordinances and traditions of men. O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you into believing in a lie? Those are lies, all those things that we've listened to other people. You know what I find interesting? I never get, hardly ever, very rare when I get somebody come and give me a scripture, say, well, Nikki, I think you need to look at this, look at this scripture. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm humble. At least I try to be anyway. 
you know. I don't know everything. I say it all the time. Now, somebody that's proper, they ain't going to say that. They ain't going to say that they slow. They don't talk like that. Well, I, I know, and I, no, that ain't me. Because you, we learn every day. But this is what I see all the time. Well, watch this video over here. Well, go over here and look at this video. No, no. You give me scripture like I do you and tell me why you believe you shouldn't be eating. Why I got to go sit and watch somebody else's video? Because the Bible says, get ye own understanding. Because if you ask, I'm going to give you, when I bring stuff to you, just like me, you should be able to do it. You, we got to go through this word for ourselves. See, too much, it, I, I, I can see it all day long. People, like, you know, you, you want to say, oh, well, you know, um, well, I listen to such and such, 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 you know, these preachers, they've been lying and they ain't been telling me this and they ain't been telling me that. You know, I had my cousins uh, to tell me it was 600-something laws and, and we don't keep them. Right, we don't. But they ain't teaching us about, see, that's why the Bible says stay away from that. Genealogy. Oh, we the, we the Hebrew likes and the Lord only care about us and the black people were treated bad and the this and the that and we be ye separate. That's, the Bible already knew this was going to go on. He said stay away from that. The genealogies want to know where you oh, all of this, where you come from and all that. Stick to the basics. The simplistic simplicity of the word, the word of God. I won't keep you guys no more. Um, I just had to do that. Take one more stab at it. Now, let me say this. If you continue after hearing what you just heard, you want to continue according to the book of Revelation because somebody told me to, well, no, that's not true. No, that was on something else. But anyway, um, you want to continue to keep the Sabbath and be in bondage. You want to continue to abstain from eating pork. You like it, I love it. Okay? I'm just trying to help you out. That's all. No harm, no foul. Okay? All right. I love you guys. See you next video. Thanks.